Hello, everyone. Welcome to our DocuSign Developer Webinar, Document Generation for eSignature. My name is Melissa Marsh from our Developer Programs Marketing Team, and I'll be moderating and running our backend logistics today. Next slide. I'm here with Julie Gordon, Programmer Writer, who will be presenting, along with Carissa Jacobson, Programmer Writer, who will be sharing a demo, and Imbar Gossett, Senior Manager, Developer Content, and Andy Singh, Developer Support Engineer 2, who will both address questions via the Q&A box throughout the session and after the demo when we open up the floor to questions. Next slide. So now before we get started, I have a few quick housekeeping items to go over. You are placed in listen only mode, and this is so the session is being recorded. Uh, you'll receive an email in about a week with a link to the webinar recording along with the other resources that we cover here today. Please be sure to use the Q&A button to ask questions at any time. Feel free to ask those as they occur to you and we'll answer via the Q&A box to let you know we'll answer them live after the demo. To copy and save your questions and answers, simply right click on them and copy and save to your desktop or document. Next slide. Now, is this webinar right for you? Well, this is a webinar for developers. If you're not a developer, you're welcome to stay, or you can check out DocuSign 101 at uh, events.docusign.com slash DocuSign 101. And I'm dropping that in the chat right now for anyone who would like to check that out. Next slide. This is just our safe harbor notice. So all of the values, email addresses, keys, secrets, tokens, and other personal information you might see here today are for demo purposes only and will be deleted or revoked after the webinar. Now you should see a quick poll on your screen in just a moment. If you can answer those questions, that will help us understand where you are in your development journey and enable us to customize content for this and future webinars. Okay, that's it for housekeeping, so let's get started. Julie, take it away. Hello and welcome. In this webinar, we'll provide an overview of document generation features and benefits. Carissa will demo the feature and walk you through the requests that make up a basic document generation flow. And I'll walk through bulk send with document generation. We'll also provide links to resources such as documentation, training, and reference information. At the end, we'll answer any questions you have. The document generation feature enables you to create reusable template documents. Template documents must be docx files, which is the only file format currently supported. Within these template documents are placeholders called data fields. At envelope generation time, each data field is populated with a value that's specific to the recipient of that envelope. In the case of an employment offer, for example, data fields can be used for things like job title, salary, and start date. Document generation also supports conditional data fields that allow text to be displayed or hidden based on other values in the document. For example, a bonus percentage can be displayed based on the job title. In the final version of a document that a recipient sees, placeholders are seamlessly replaced with the correct information and the document looks like it was created just for that recipient. Here's what a template document looks like and what an actual customer document generated from that template looks like. The template document on the left has placeholder values and conditional logic highlighted. After this webinar, we'll share a list of links with you that include DocuSign support articles that explain the data field and conditional field syntax. On the right, the document as displayed to the recipient is cleanly formatted and has all the custom values populated. You have two options for creating document generation template documents. One option is to create the docx file and add the data field syntax and conditional syntax manually. Another option is to use DocuSign Template Assistant for Word, which is a Microsoft Word add-in. It allows you to define data field names, select a location in the document, and insert a data field with the click of a button. The add-in automatically generates the syntax for you. You can also define data fields using JSON, and a rules, field, a rules feature automatically generates the syntax for showing or hiding conditional content. 
If you provide sample values in the add-in, you can use the preview feature to see what a document will look like for an end user. Here's a summary of some benefits of using document generation. You can generate agreements faster by setting up your templates and then programmatically populating them with custom data at send time. You can improve the signer experience by providing personalized, professionally formatted agreements. You can simplify deployment of agreements by creating a single template that can adapt automatically to multiple agreement scenarios by updating the text through conditional logic. Because document generation builds on existing DocuSign functionality, you can easily update your existing integrations to incorporate this feature. Here's a list of the API requests that make up a basic document generation scenario, which Carissa will demonstrate in a few minutes. The first three requests create a template, add a document containing data fields to the template, and add tabs to the document. These requests don't need to be executed every time you want to send envelopes that use document generation, since a template, once created, is reusable. The fourth request creates a draft envelope that can be sent to a specific recipient. The next two requests use endpoints that are specific to document generation. One returns a list of the data fields that DocuSign identified in the document, and the other populates the data fields with custom values for the recipient. In our offer letter example, these would be things like the job title and salary. Finally, the last request sends the envelope to the recipient. Now I will hand things off to Carissa for a demo. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, Okay. All righty. Hello, everyone. My name is Carissa Jacobson. Um, and in this demo, I will um, show you how to use the document generation feature to send dynamically generated documents in a DocuSign envelope. I'll first show a closer look at the document with data fields that I'll be using in the demo. Then I'll go over how to set up a template and send an envelope um, using the DocuSign UI, just so that you can get more of a visual on what this process entails. And then I'll show how to do the exact same thing in Bash with the DocuSign eSignature REST API. Again, creating a template and sending an envelope with custom data for each data field defined in the template. So here's an example of a document with data fields that I'll be using for the demo. Everything that is enclosed in the double curly brackets um, represents a data field that can be replaced with custom data during the envelope creation process. As you can see, we also put a conditional statement also within curly brackets um, so that based on the data that we provide, um, the candidate receiving the offer letter will either end up with a statement that they are eligible for a bonus of up to 20% based on their performance um, or up to 10%, um, and that will be based on the value we give for job title. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out on this document is that I have also placed um, this invisible text or white text above the employee signature line and the date line. Um, and I will show you how to use this text to auto place our signer tabs onto the document. Um, so I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, and now I'll go ahead and download this document as a docx file. All righty. So now over here in my developer account, I'll move to the templates tab and I'll get started with creating that template. So I'll go ahead and give it a name and a description. And then I will add the document that I just showed you. All righty. So at this point, you can already tell that we're on track because you can see this gray tag at the upper right-hand corner of this little um, document preview. 
indicating that the data fields have already been detected. So there's nothing that I personally need to do to tell DocuSign what our data fields are or where they are in the document. All of that is automatically detected when you upload a document that's appropriately formatted for document generation. Um, so that is a good indicator right here that you've done that correctly um, in the UI. Um, so now I'll move on to adding a recipient. Um, since this is an example offer letter, I'll give a role name of candidate. And for now, I'm just going to leave the name and email blank since later on when I actually use this template to create an envelope, um, I can fill the recipient information in at that time. Um, I'll leave all of this other, all of these other things as the default and move on to setting our signer tabs. Um, so here's where I can I'm going to show you how to auto place the tabs based on that white text that I showed you in the document. So I'll drag a sign here field onto the document and then over in this right hand toolbar under location. And you can see auto place and I'll click set up for that. Um, so for this, I just need to make sure to enter the exact text that I have placed on my document. Um, and that's another reason why you need to make sure that whatever you place there is um, unique to any of the other words on the document because you only want the tab to show up exactly where you want it to. So I put sign here um, for the signature tab. And as you can see, it snapped right into the right place. And I'll do the same thing for the date signed tab. For that one, I put date here on the document. Cool, so all of that looks good. And the reason why I specifically wanted to use auto place for the tabs in this document is that since we have all of this conditional logic right here in our document, um, during send time on our envelope, um, our document will be updated to only include one line of text. So instead of six lines, it'll only be one line um, that will be the appropriate bonus statement. So everything below that will move up. And so if I were to have just dragged and dropped the tabs in the right place as they appear now, that's not where these lines are really going to end up during send time. So um, for document generation, since you don't really know how the document um, will exactly look, um, during the template creation process, using auto place is a really great way to make sure that you don't have to go in and update your tab location later. Um, so that's it for that. I'm going to go ahead and save and close. And now we have our template and you can also see that below um, our template name, it also says eligible for matching. And that is another indicator that this is a template that can be used with document generation. Um, so I'll go ahead and use this template now to send an envelope. Okay, so everything looks good. We have our document preview and now I can go ahead and add my recipient. Um, and you can see that this is the same placeholder that I added before with the role name matching candidate. Um, so I will go ahead and type in my candidate name. And then um, here's where you could put the candidate's email address, but for now I'm just going to put um, my own, but we'll pretend that it's the candidate. And um, leaving everything else the same. And now we have we come to the form field where we can actually provide the custom data that's gonna be plugged into our document. So I'll give it a candidate name and then job title. Since our conditional statement is checking if job title is equal to software engineer, I'll go ahead and put that so that you can see what it looks like um, when the conditional statement evaluates as true. Give it a manager name, start date and salary. And now we can review the document before we send it. So everything looks great here. We can see um, that the conditional statement evaluated to true and we have our bonus statement of eligibility for bonus up to 20%. Um, and though the document changed, our tabs are still in the right place. So everything looks good. I'll go ahead and send it.
and I should be able to sign it since I sent it to myself. Cool. So this is the completed um, envelope document, what it looks like. We have our date filled in for us and I'll go ahead and sign and finish that up. Oh, maybe I signed the wrong one. Either way, it'll look the same. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So um, I'm just gonna move on to our uh, VS code where I'll show you how to do the same exact process, but this time using the e-signature REST API in this bash script. Um, before I start, I just want to mention that since authentication is not the main focus of this webinar, I have already generated an access token um, and I'm storing it in a file in my um, config folder. Um, but I will move on to the first step of creating a template with the API, which is to just create this kind of bare bones template. Um, we're not going to add our tabs or our document in this step. For now, we're only going to add our um, placeholder recipient, just like we did in the UI. We're going to give it a role name of candidate, and then we're, we don't have to add the email address or name at this time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start running that right now. Cool, so it looks like it was cre um, created successfully. And then we have um, this line of code right here, which is going to pull our template ID from the JSON response, um, because we'll need that to update our template later on with the other information that we need. So in, in this second API call, this put request to update our template um, is where we're going to add the document. Um, and I'm using the same document that I used when I showed you in the UI. Um, and the reason that we need to do this in a separate step is because this is the only um, endpoint that is currently set up to automatically detect the data fields in a document generation document. Um, so if you include your document in this first create call, it's not going to auto detect that. It's not going to work. Um, so we have to do it in this separate update template call. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, so it looks like it successfully created the document and attached it to the um, template. Um, and we can see that it has automatically detected those data fields because we can see this field here is docgen document is equal to true. To true. Um, so it looks like we're on track. Um, and now that we have a document, um, we actually have something to attach our tabs to. Um, so now we can go ahead and um, add our sign here tab and our date signed tab to the document. Um, we're still using auto place here, but instead of using the white text that I showed you, we're using the actual visible um, employee signature and date, um, which you can see is on this document here. Um, and we're using an offset so that it appears above the line instead of directly on top of the text. Um, you can play around with this X offset and Y offset to get it exactly where you want, but this is just another way to do it if you don't wanna add that invisible text above the line. Um, so I'll go ahead and run that call, this call here to um, attach our tabs to the, to the document. Cool, so it looks like all of that worked. And now we can, um, so those are all of the steps um, for creating our template. Our template is good to go exactly as we had it in the UI. Um, so since you only need to create the template one time, um, another option if you don't want to go through all of these steps using the API, if you find it easier, you can just um, take the template ID from um, uh, your developer account and paste it right into your code here. Um, but now you know how to do it both ways, just in case. Um, but yeah, so now we can move on to starting to create our envelope. When we first create our envelope, we want to make sure that we create it as a draft. Um, we don't wanna send it yet. We don't have 
um, all of our custom data in the um, data fields yet. And so we're just going to make sure that our status is created instead of sent. And here's where we can add our um, uh, recipient information. So again, I have um, our name and I'm using um, the same email um, as I did in the UI. Um, so I'll go ahead and create my envelope draft. And again, here we're extracting the envelope ID from the JSON response so that we can use it to update our data fields um, later on. Um, but before we do that, um, we can use um, this endpoint right here to get our doc gen form field. So if you don't exactly know what all of your um, data fields are, um, you can use this call and get all of your data fields in a, in a JSON response. So I'll go ahead and show you that. And as you can see, it's correctly identified all of our data fields. We have our job title, our candidate name, manager name, start date, salary, um, everything looks good. And then we also are um, extracting the document ID um, as an important inf uh, information that we need as, from that response as well, because we're gonna use our document ID in the next step um, when we update those data fields. Okay, so I will continue on and um, provide that custom data in this bash script. I'm having um, all of those values be read as, um, as input from uh, this script. So I will again provide candidate name. Um, and since I already showed you what it looked like when the conditional statement evaluated as true, I'll choose something else. Um, so that we can see what the false statement looks like. Manager name, um, start date, and salary. Cool, so we can see from the JSON response that our merge succeeded. Um, everything looks good and um, that's about it. The final step is just to send the envelope by changing our status from created to sent um, using this put request right here. Great, so our envelope is sent. I'll go ahead and go over to my email so that I can show you. One second. All right. Okay, here we go. Um, so we have the document sent to my email and I'll go ahead and sign it with you. Oh, that must be the wrong one. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Alrighty. So everything looks exactly as it did when we did it with the UI. We have all of our data fields um, um, subbed in with our actual values. It's a nicely formatted document. Our tabs are in the right place. Um, everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and sign it and finish that up. And that's it for the demo. I'll go ahead and um, hand it back off to Julie and I'll go ahead and stop sharing. All right. So let me resume the share. Uh, so can you see my slide? Yep. Okay, great. All righty. So, the bulk send feature enables you to send many envelopes at the same time by creating a bulk list of recipients and generating a batch of envelopes from that list. Document generation is supported with bulk send, so you can send a document containing recipient specific values to each bulk recipient. Here's a sample request sequence for bulk send with document generation. As with the basic request sequence, the first three requests create the template 
add a document with data fields to it and define the tabs on the document. In this scenario, a template's get request returns the template details, which include a list of data fields that can be updated with recipient specific values at envelope send time. The fifth request creates the list of bulk recipients, including each recipient name and email address. Along with that information, the request body includes the values for the data fields for each recipient. So for example, if you were bulk sending offer letters to different job candidates, each candidate's recipient information and data field values, like job title and salary, would be defined in this request. Finally, you send the last request, which references your template ID and bulk recipient list ID to generate the individual envelopes and send them. So uh, let's take a look at the requests in Postman. All right, so here is the first request in Postman uh, where we are creating the template. Um, so you create the template, you define a role name, routing order, other parameters, and you get back a template ID. In the next step, you're going to update the template and add the document with data fields to it. So this is that request uh, with the base 64 encoded document. The third step is adding tabs to that document. So this is all very similar to the basic flow that Carissa just went through. So uh, something that's slightly different with bulk send is in order to get your data, your list of data fields uh, that are associated with the document, you do a templates get request. So the templates get request returns general template information, but it also includes in the response the docgen form fields array, which has the list of all the data fields. So here you see the candidate name, job title, etc. So something that is uh, unique to the bulk send scenario is you define a bulk recipient list, which is what this request is doing. So the bulk recipient list defines the name and the email address of each recipient. So here's an example of the first recipient right here. Plus for each recipient, it defines the data field values. So for the first recipient, I'm going to use a candidate name of Candace Candidate, um, job title software engineer, manager name, et cetera. Further down in this request, we have the second recipient details, including the name and email address, plus their data field values, which are different. Um, when you execute this request to create your uh, bulk list, you get back a list ID in the response. And then finally, you execute a request to use the bulk list to generate your batch of bulk envelopes. And that request needs the bulk list ID, uh, which was returned by the previous week request, plus the template ID. And when you execute this request, you get back a batch ID, uh, which is associated with your batch of bulk envelopes that are being generated, and you can use other requests related to bulk send with this batch ID to track information um, about how the envelopes are being generated and processed. So, um, so the final step is, uh, in this example, I only did two bulk envelopes. So here we can see the bulk envelopes that were generated. Here's the first one with the specific information, name and manager name. And here is the second one with uh, the specific data field information uh, that I provided for this bulk recipient. All right. So continuing with the presentation. Here are some resources, or here are some sources of information about document generation, including developer documentation, UI documentation, reference information, and training. After the webinar, links to these resources will be shared with you. And for those of you who are DocuSign partners or ISVs, here are some resources to get started developing a DocuSign integration. Julie, could you go back to the first slide of the resources? Perfect, thank you. 
All right, so I dropped a few of our more common um, developer resources into the chat, so feel free to take a look at that, but not to worry, we will send a, an email to all of you who attended as well as those who registered um, and couldn't make it today with the recording along with the resources that we covered. So um, check that out in about a week from today. And then if you have additional questions that maybe you thought of afterwards or you're still not quite clear and need some help, you can always reach out to us at developers at .com, and this team will follow up with you after today's webinar, or you can post questions on Stack Overflow and tag them with DocuSign API for community response, or you can attend one of our upcoming webinars. So we've got the API office hours. You can ask us anything during this on August 8th, live from Seattle. And then we'll also have a special topic webinar for developers on August 22nd for Monitor API and some of the new announcements coming out. Um, be sure to take the post webinar survey. Tell us how we did and what you'd like to see for future topics. And then um, I think that that's about it. So. We will receive a survey at the end of the webinar. Again, that pops up as you exit. We appreciate you taking that. And I would like to thank Julie for leading the webinar today, Carissa for demoing, and Imbar and Andy for addressing all of the great questions. So thank you, everybody. You did a fantastic job. And thank you to all of you, our attendees, for joining us. You had wonderful questions, and we truly appreciate the engagement. Have a great remainder of the day, everyone.